war. War never changes. I suppose it'd be pretty funny if you just filled the Institute computer network full of like pornography or something. Just loading all the crazy different hollow tapes you're not meant to load. Lag down the processor or whatever. Now it's 20 meters below me. Make your mind up, game. Here we go. Load times in the Institute are great. I wish the game loaded that quick normally. Maybe I should take some courses with me. Send a message. Please don't. There's enough friction as it is between us and pretty much all the other departments. You going soft on me, Alana? My methods get results, and they will this time as well. You'll see. Do this by the book. You forget I used to be an institute cop. Mayor and my ass, blah blah blah. Oh, it's all the stuff to steal again. Systems will be starting a new dark matter initiative soon. Cool. Dark matter's cool. I like dark matter. Order. So much technology. I hope it sells for a lot. If the robotics division was a little more careful, we wouldn't have since trying to escape. Says the guy whose hands are going through his coat. Hi, Doc. So, here you are. Justin Ayo, acting director of the Synth Retention Bureau. I'll be up front with you. We're going to be keeping a close eye on you for the near future. Despite your relation to father, you're a bit of an unknown quantity. I'm sure you understand. There won't be any issues will there oh there might why big issues oh it's nothing personal i don't trust anyone now father has asked that i provide you with well, a look at that dude's cheek synth retention our primary responsibility is the recovery of escaped synths that are hiding among the human population on the surface why would synths want to escape synths do not want they might look like human beings, but they're machines. As to why they're escaping? That matter is currently under investigation. Our main instrument is the Courser, a third generation synth assigned to operate on the surface. Coursers hunt down and reclaim synths that have escaped the Institute. They yeah, they also kill everybody trained in combat, who's there as well. And tracking. In a word, our Coursers are relentless. But I gather you know all this, since you've encountered them already. In fact, I'd very much like to know how you defeated it. I shot him in the face several times. I'm no stranger to combat. Even so, a courser should be more than a match for any single combatant. I suppose I'll have to ask robotics to perform detailed diagnostics on the entire production run. As if we don't have enough problems. I have now, Unless you need something you else, I'll get back to work. Okay. Oh, achievement. Institutionalized. Wow. Um. You mentioned that coursers undergo special training. Tell me more about it. The SRP is great. Monitors our Gen 3 synth population, looking for specific traits. Those who show tenacity, fearlessness, and independence undergo a rigorous training regimen. We teach them armed and unarmed combat, investigative techniques, psychology, and mechanical skills. Those who pass a final evaluation become coursers. The rest have their memories wiped and return to their former duties. Oh, that's nice of you. Hi. Wow! Look how wide she is! Have you got something in your pockets, lady, or are your hips just twice the size they're supposed to be? Can you fit through doors? Do you have to get expensive seats on planes? Can you fit on roller coasters? I want answers, bitch! <laughs> Um, this way. Sir. 43 meters this way. Talk to father. Okay, father. Everyone's excited about the new scene. I am Mufasa! Yes. Hi, Dad. I mean, son. 
Why do you have blue hair? You still haven't told me the most intriguing of the mysteries. The hell happened to your beard, dude? Now that you've had a chance to see the Institute firsthand, what do you think? Look at his cufflinks. First things first. How do I get back to the surface? The same way you got in, of course. You are not a prisoner here. You may come and go as you please. Ultimately, all our knowledge and resources are focused on a single goal. The goal is best summarized by our motto. Mankind. Redefined. Unfortunately, no advancement comes without occasional setbacks. As remarkable as our synths are, they can be... dangerous without proper supervision. The superior synth mind and body attempting to wrestle with something approaching free will can be a recipe for chaos. I think this guy's a synth. If the synths are intelligent and self-aware, then they have a right to free will. However closely they may approximate human behavior, they are still our creations. When you see what I have to show you, I think you'll agree that we know what is best for our synths. A rogue synth has taken over the Raider Gang at Libertalia. His memories have been erased, and his identity altered. He believes he's a man named Gabriel. Under his leadership, the Raiders have taken many innocent lives. I've dispatched a courser to Libertalia. I'd like you to join him and reclaim that synth. Uh, okay. We'll bring that synth home. That would be best for everyone. Now you should get moving. Many people are in danger, and a delay could cost lives. This is bullshit, this. You're supposed to listen to your dad. Not the other way around. You don't command your father to do things. This is ridiculous. I should slap you silly just for that. Right here. Right in your weird blue beard face. Blue, blue sure, man. That's it. It's safe blue man group. I'm a D, I'm a die. Um, so I want to do these two first, just to piss on the sandwich that is the Institute. But you notice how I don't have enough... Can I, can I teleport out of here just fast traveling? So that's, that's where the courser is, I assume. I keep pressing triggers and it, it don't, they don't help. <laughs> they just don't help. Why do I keep pressing them? Oh, you can! That is so good. That is awesome, dude. I was just thinking. It'd be really cool if you saw a lightning burst and you materialised and you could control and that's kind of what they did. It wasn't quite as good as what I had in my imagination, but it's pretty damn cool. Oh, that was nice. Such a good touch. Okay, maxi pad. I received word that Dr. Lee is returning to us. Damn straight. Do you think she'll be? Slap her a few times, I'm sure she'll be fine. I've convinced her that the Institute is the enemy, not the Brotherhood. Well done, Knight. As soon as Dr. Lee arrives, we'll interrogate her aboard the Pridwin. She's been under the Institute's influence Pridwin. for the last decade, and we can't afford to take any chances. Now, I believe you still possess an important piece of data that Proctor Ingram is eagerly awaiting. I want you to bring it to her immediately. Once again, Knight. You don't fail to impress. Just bump. Dismissed. No worries, come over, man. We're kicking ass. Uh, does that lead outside? It does. I wish I had my armor, I could just jump off. I love jumping off things on that with that armor. Exactly. I put one in the ass and then one on the face. Not necessarily in that order. Uh, wonderful. I love it when my game almost crashes doing simple tasks that should be very simple. Is 
she is. Here's your holotape, Proctor. The marathon Hope runner. The data on that thing was worth it. Thanks. You know, it's good to see you're still in one piece. I wasn't sure what the interceptor would do to you. I wasn't worried. <laughs> you should see my <laughs> asshole. <laughs> I built the device myself. I have confidence in everything I built too. But that's because I'll only deal with technology that I understand. Speaking of technology I don't understand, I'll get this holotape to Proctor Quinlan. I'm dying to find out what's <laughs> Wanna on bang? It. Hopefully it'll reveal a weakness in their defenses. That would be the best case scenario. Before we jump to conclusions, let's see what Quinlan's scribes can get off of it. I'm sure the Institute has all of their data heavily encrypted, so it's gonna take some time to crack. After that, we'll have to see what we've got. There's no telling what we might have grabbed off their mainframe. In the meantime, I've got a new assignment for you. So, I bet you're eager to get your hands dirty on our new project. How much has Maxon told you about it? Uh, Whatever is he naked is, picture taken? Sure it'll help us crush the Institute. It will, but we've got a lot of work ahead of us first. Come on, it's this way. We're going to build a massive laser. We're going to call it Blazer Laser. Now the Pridwin might be a big beast, but she's not built for fighting. That's where our new project comes in. It's Liberty Prime. Oh, that is cool, dude. This is the guy who who was with you at the end of the game on Fallout 3. They're going to rebuild it, I assume. What? Wow, that dude's seen better days. It's the most advanced robot the Brotherhood has ever had at its disposal. Fortunately, <laughs> Liberty Prime was destroyed in the line of duty. I've spent the better part of the last few years piecing him back together. And if you think that was, was that easy, during Broken Steel? I can't remember. Tetron while you're blindfolded. But most of Prime's parts fully assembled. It's cool that they the brought that guy back. That it's going to take more than I a few approve. rivets and some spot welding to get them working again. And the first problem is his CPU. It's fragile, and every time we try to feed power to it, it blows itself out. I assume you can fix that? I wish it was that simple. If this happened to one of the robots on the Pridwin, I'd just swap out its fusion pile. As much as I hate to admit it, Prime's power systems are out of my league. Luckily, you were able to convince Dr. Madison Lee to return to the Brotherhood. She was on the original build team for Liberty Prime a little over a decade ago. I've already spoken to her, but she's reluctant to work on Prime for some reason. If you could get her down here to lend a hand with his power system, we can get the big guy moving. No machine should have free will. Why? You jealous you had to turn yours in? This game is so broken, guys. It's it's almost hilarious. I just went to load or continue, and it said save corrupt again somehow, <laughs> and it said my playtime was twenty five days. Twenty five days. I don't think I've spent twenty five days doing anything. Twenty five days. <laughs> but this is where we left off. Uh, I can't quite remember what we were doing. Cause once again, uh, my life has been completely stolen by. Bloodborne. I'm kind of pissed off at it because it's killing my will to want to play this game and I think this game's amazing and I want to play it so um oh I remember we were going to meet up with the Corsa weren't we so let's go and do that but it's, it's this it's this weird thing of all I wanted to do was play Fallout I was literally just breathing eating sleeping all of it Fallout because how could you not? I think the game's terrific. We'll go from this beach and we'll go up and to the right. And I wasn't able to play it as much as I could because I was spending time with my girlfriend and we were doing things together and it was awesome but at the same time I was always like, you know, oh, I'm, I'm craving Fallout. This game is so good. And then, when I get the opportunity to play it and to completely devote some time to it, Bloodborne DLC comes out. I don't even really want to play it. I'm like, yeah, I've got to play, you know, it's just, I love Bloodborne, and it's a great game, and, and people will expect it. So I pick it up, and I start playing, and it doesn't have its, you know, it doesn't really have me. I'm like, I just want to play Fallout, fuck this, this is so stressful. I've just come from the most relaxing game on the planet that I'm in love with, to this horrendous, like, you fucking died, you died, you shit, you shit, you shit, shit. 
And I'm just like, come on, this is no fun. And then something changed. Something just kind of changed. I finished that playthrough, I started playing a bit more. And boom. Like, I cannot stop playing Bloodborne now. It's, it's crazy. And unfortunately, poor Fallout was suffering. And of course, I've had a lot of technical issues and save files and stuff, and it's not helped, but it's just, it's so weird. I would have never imagined feeling how I feel right now, a month ago, because it just wasn't how it was lining up to be at all. It just goes to show, doesn't it? Like, we've got too many good games, we're so spoiled, though. Where is that? Why is there so many dudes? One, two, three, four. Dead. Goodness me, the camera's all over the place. A grenade! I love the moody lighting of the radiation storms. So we need to go uh, towards. That. Which is this way. And I'm not interested in that shit. I want to explore. We've killed raiders. We know what that's about. We need to be careful here of the Milo. Because I'm moving really fast. This is awesome. I love how mobile my guy feels. Okay. Is there anything that we've. I heard you. Does caution mean he can see me yet? He does. See ya. I do apologise if you're getting bored of the look of my character. I am bored with it too, but it's just, it's too good. <coughs> okay. I didn't realise I had all this shit, so I'm gonna give Nick a hey, bunch of shit. Something for you? And then what we'll do, guys, is once we unlock the fast travel to the point that it wants us to go to, we will uh, fly away and sell all of it. Oh no, Lorenzo, damn it! There you go, buddy. So we're going this way. Whenever these storms hit, I always... Interesting, I've never even been here. What is this? Got a bugle? Boston bugle. Is it bugle? Ooh, look at that guy! Maya Lurk Razor Claw! So does he just have, like, legit claws? Oh, he takes legit damage! Poor bugger. Easy. Something scary about the sea and not being able to see. If you get what I mean. I don't know if I've said this before on, on a video, but when I was younger and I used to go to the seaside, because I'm an idiot, I used to be a scared. I used to be scared of crocodiles and alligators, and I didn't have this concept that um, there's no way they could be there. But still, you know, it's like it's water. I don't want to get killed by fucking. Crocodile Dundee monsters. And it, it was the weirdest sensation because I don't know if you've ever seen the tide when it swings the apple floor back and forth. Where is this? But it, it, it oscillates in such a, a strange way that it's really difficult to see what's you know, beneath the waves. And something that always scared me. Oh, here comes the stranger. One thing that always unsettled me about the sea was that you never knew when it dropped off. Because sometimes they'll go out for miles, don't they? And it's like a gradual deepening of the water. Some of them don't do that. Some of them are literally like a shelf where it just drops off immediately and it goes really deep. And I can swim and everything. It's just the idea of not knowing the depth always unsettled me. But when I was younger, I used to think for some really strange reason, a glowing mile lurk? I need to get some crits on you, friend. But I just have this fear about 
these giant dinosaurs that didn't live near my country and would never be near my country outside of perhaps maybe something like a zoo. Yet, it was legit. And I used to always think like they were just on the edge of my vision. Yeah, an irrational fear of dinosaurs for like one summer. <laughs> That guy does interesting damage. Touche, sir. But that happened. And it's, looking back on it, you know, it's preposterous and it's, it's silly, but... Surprising what you can be scared of when you're younger. And I've been scared of some strange things. Like, I was supposed to go to a place called Flamingo Land, which... If you don't live in England, you probably have no idea what that is, and maybe if you do live in England, you still might not know, because I think it's probably shut down by now. But it was a theme park, and it was a theme park that was also a zoo, and my nan had made the mistake of telling me that they had crocodiles in part of their zoo, so I thought I was going to die, and I didn't want to go. <laughs> so I never went to Flamingo Land, you know? That's just the kind of guy I was. I had a very sensible perspective when it came to uh, predatory dinosaurs. <laughs> Which don't exist, of course, because the, the world is only 2,000 years old. Well, that's what the Bible told, tells you anyway, if you, uh, if you measure the length of Enoch's beard. Okay. So let's put the uh, hazmat suit on and let's hope that this water is uh, as deep as I need it to be. Please don't corrupt save. Yeah, there we go. But fears as a child and fears as an adult is such a completely different dialogue. It's almost willfully different in a lot of ways, because all your fears as a child generally are completely irrational. They stem from a lack of understanding. Which is not a bad thing as long as you better yourself and you get that understanding. Let's eat some of the hound meat. Somebody was asking me why I don't just use uh, stim packs and purified water to heal. Why do I have all these um, bootleg healing items that are weighing me down? Well, the main reason is I don't much like it's Duke again. <clears throat> just the part I was looking for. Using stim packs, I like to sell them. Suck a junk is picked clean, have you? More than anything. Too bad. Ain't that a bite? And I kinda like well, having all the different kinds of stuff. I feel like I'm foraging. You seem like a cool cat. This guy's really quiet. I already have, Duke. You were there. I hate how they talk. I hate how you talk. So now that we've we've come up to this peak, we can we can take this off now. And we can go towards uh, that factory to discover it. A nice discovery bonus. And then we'll go towards the objective. Bloody seeing things. I will say one thing. Uh, there's something about Bloodborne. I think it might be the duplicate frames. Something along those lines. That, that hurts my eyes when I play it. And it gives me headaches. Because I can play other games for like 20 hours straight and not have a single issue, but there's something about Bloodborne that, that really irritates my eyes. And whatever it is, I wish it didn't exist, but it does. So it's one of those things where I've just got to, I've got to kind of get used to it again when I start playing it. Because it makes me feel tired. And nothing else does that. Like, I could understand if it was just, you know, staring at a TV screen or staring at a monitor. If it was hurting my eyes and making me feel tired, then maybe I need glasses. Or, you know, something along those lines. But that's not the case whatsoever. It's literally that one game. And for the most, my eyes are really good. All considered. You know, they work and I'm happy with them and I don't have to wear any lenses or anything. Ooh, it's cars open, but it's a zero hit chance. Who the hell's fighting this thing, by the way? Just a raider? That raider kind of looks like I, how I used to look.
He's doing a good job. These enemies are really tough. Nah, I don't think he's caused that at all. Can I do this? Now look at the life on this motherfucker. Have I got anything stupid and big? No. I really need to go back through my inventory. I'm not digging over there to either. Look at the damage. No damage on any of it. Ooh, he has my pulses, doesn't he? They will hurt this thing. Think they're gone for good? Trade me, dickhead. This thing's gonna come fuck us up. We don't trade. I think it's pulse. I don't know what that does. Yeah, this dude is coming. <laughs> it's like I'm coming. Can you imagine how much I'm in heaven? Oh. Hey. See ya. I wanna move, dude. <laughs> Whoa! That was like the T-1000. He did not give a single shit. They are by far the hardest enemy in this game. They're the new Deathclaw. Deathclaw's a bitch as compared to those things. Um, what is he doing? Hey, come grab this. Get that rifle. There's another one. Jesus, I need your minds, dude. I need. Nick, shut up now. It's coming. It's literally coming. It's just like Harney. Too pow. Okay, now. Is this what we do? We go. One there. And then one there. And then we shoot him at this distance. Look at that, it would do max damage, but it's not exposed, so it doesn't. It's how long that bullet took to travel. Come on, boy. I want you, Marsh! to the graphics <laughs> what is happening <laughs> what is that such a refreshing change to have fire not damage you from ridiculous distances Lawrence could learn from the sentry box because Lawrence is a big bell end Ooh, there's lots to explore here that I've not seen. Can I shoot the birds? Have we discovered if we can shoot the birds yet? We can. Sorry, dude. My bad. I didn't even get out for it. That's ridiculous. Just murdered a poor innocent bird. Okay. Okay. What's here? I don't mean here. I'm tempted to want to sneak a bit. I really like the ambient music on this game. I was listening to a podcast the other day. Oh! Look how much damage we're not doing to this one. She's got her stealth. Oh, you the fuck off you! Uh, how do I change weapon again? I forget. This one. Dude, the invisible one. There we go. Whoa, what the hell was that? This bitch has got eye beams. She's like Superman. I need to point blank her. I can see you, cow. Oh my goodness, we need to use drugs. <laughs> She's too good. Um, I want to use like a big fuck you piece of meat, death claw steak. It's the ultimate. Ah. Eat my dirk, bitch. I can't. 
can't use Vats because she's invisible. Jesus Christ! This thing is nuts! Where's the fucking buff tap jets? Super jets, here we go, psycho jet. Eat my dick! I'm in trouble, dude. She's she's trapped me. You got anything that does against damage? Underestimated the kind of damage that this thing. Can do. Oh, that's a twist. <laughs> 